beasts or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. This is Psalm chapter 32. We're here today to plead for you in God's stead that you be reconciled to God. Babies are murdered in here, girls. Babies are murdered. Your mothers didn't come here and have you murdered, but they gave you life. And you are to do the same. And if you're not here for an abortion, you're supporting a place that slaughters children. Turn from your sin and trust in Jesus. We're here today as ministers of God to plead with you to be reconciled to the holy God who made you. We're pleading with you to reconcile yourself with the God who made you. And the only way to do that is to receive the blessing of a forgiveness for sins. As I talked about earlier, when we had a gentleman outside, all men, all women have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have sinned. And that's a fundamental, irreversible problem in and of ourselves. There's nothing you and I can do about our sin. We were born as sinners under the headship, the federal headship of our forefather, Adam. We were born in sin with Adam as our federal head. He fell short of upholding God's standard, and he's our head, he's our representative. And so we've been born in him, sinners. All of you who hear my voice today, born sinners. And God is good and just, and so that sin requires payment. So that's a fundamental problem. What do we do with sin? You maybe haven't killed your baby today. You may be in the waiting room right now. Even the thought of murdering your child is sin. What got you here today was potentially sin. Fornication outside of marriage, that's a sin. That might have brought you here today. Love for the life that you live now and not wanting a child to taint that or take away from that, that's a sin. These are all sins, and they're just a few of the many you commit each and every day. Sins run rampant in our lives. And even just one sin requires payment for eternity at the hand of Almighty God. So sin is a fundamental problem. David, the author of our psalm, in chapter 32 said, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Well, certainly. How good does that sound? A covering for sin. That's what you need. That's what I need. All men, all women need a covering for sin. Need a covering for sin. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. But again, the problem, or rather the question is, how do we take hold of this blessing to not have our sin imputed to us? Isn't it too late? We already have sin. We're born in sin and we have sinned. So how do we take hold of this blessedness? Is there a way? Is there a way for you to have life? From what you've heard this morning, from the preaching of a faithful gospel from multiple men, is that you do not deserve salvation. The fact that you're in Planned Parenthood today, for whatever reason, means you've sinned. Is there a covering for sin? Can there be forgiveness of sin? David speaks of prior to his confession. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah. Know that whatever, know that whatever blessings you have in this life now are gifts from God. Anything you enjoy, and they're meant to bring you to worship Him. And if you don't, all of it will be dried up. All of it will waste away. It will actually come as a curse to you. 
Because instead of taking that blessing that God gave you and allowing it to lead you to praise Him as, it's ought, as it ought to do, you sin against Him with it. You sin against Him with it. And a day will come where you'll stand before Him and everything will be laid bare. Every sin will be laid bare. And on that day, every blessing that you've been given from God, if you did not use it to praise His name, it will be held to your account. For you, sir, I like you. I really appreciate you being out here. When you're out here, I don't have to worry about which side of this line I'm stepping on. You don't hold me to arbitrary rules. But the reality is every dollar you make here is going to be held against you. Every single dollar you make is going to be held against you. You're standing out here with a gun. Nobody's over the line, don't worry. I wasn't, I wasn't saying it like we're messing with you, dude. Don't worry. Is he still here? Is he watching? Is that what's going on? Lance, it's okay. Lance, he'll go for your first. Every dollar you make here, sir, you're standing out here with a gun protecting the murder of innocent children. God's going to hold that to your account. But you know this as well as anyone because we're out here pretty often. I don't think you're a good listener. God offers forgiveness of sins. God offers life. Repentance, turning from sin, brings life. God offers the gift of faith and repentance. Turn from your sin, trust in Jesus, put all your sins on Him. It doesn't require payment for you. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of the gospel. Jesus has paid for your sins for you if you would but believe in Him. Ma'am. This is a weighty thing. This is a weighty thing, ma'am. Give us a moment of your time. They'll wait for you. Give us a minute of your time, ma'am. Don't murder your child. Please. David said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquity. Have I not hid? I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. David says that he acknowledged his sin. Simply acknowledged it. David didn't pay for his sins and then have forgiveness. No, David acknowledged his sins. He called them what they were. He recognized that God was holy. And because God's holy and just, Thank we... Well, this place murders children. So whatever your role is here, ma'am, you're supporting the murder of children. So get your friend out of there. And repent of your sins. Lesbianism is a sin, ma'am. Repent of your sins. That's perversion. Turn to Christ. Receive forgiveness. Find freedom. David says he simply conf confessed his transgressions to the Lord and received forgiveness for his iniquities. How is this possible? Well, in confession, what about the baby? Can they choose anything? Or do they only get death? They only get death, I guess. Yeah, I thought we were supposed to care about voices. They don't get one. One liner's good. How is it possible for David to say that he simply confessed his sins and received forgiveness for his iniquity? In confessing our sins, we're acknowledging who God is, that he's the holy, good, eternal, and just God, and that sin requires an eternal payment from us unless it be put upon his son. In confessing our sin, we're saying that we know what sin is, we know what it deserves, and we're putting our faith, our trust in another, not in ourselves. Salvation is not you walking out of here and doing better the rest of your life, stacking up more good works than bad works. That's not what it means to be reconciled to God. What it means to be reconciled to God is to confess your sin and to trust in God's Son, Jesus Christ for forgiveness of sins and for eternal life. For forgiveness of sins and eternal life. This has been talked about already today, but hear me again. God sent his only son, truly God and truly man. Jesus was born of a virgin conceived by the Holy Spirit. 
and he lived a perfect life by the power of the Spirit, in line with the, the will of God, the law of God, every moment of every day from his heart. Everywhere you failed, everywhere you failed God's law, Jesus succeeded. And he succeeded perfectly. And it's not just about what he did, but it's about who he is. He's the God-man. The Savior of eternal worth. Able to take upon himself the sins of the world, the sins of all his people. Every single person who would put their faith in him will not perish, but have eternal life. After living a perfect life, Jesus died a gruesome death upon a cross, nailed to a tree, as if he was a sinner, though he had committed no sin. The Bible says that Jesus was actually made sin for us. He who knew no sin was made sin for us so that in him, in Jesus, we might be made the righteousness of God. In Jesus, you can be made the righteousness of God. The call is to confess your sins. Repent. Turn from your sins and trust upon Jesus. For he was not just crucified, but rose from the dead. The Bible says that he was raised from the dead for our justification. Justification is a theological word. It means to have a legal, it's a legal standing. We have right legal standing with God. We've been declared righteous through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He did not die as a good example. He did not die as this gentleman said over here, standing up for good ideals. No, no, that's blasphemy. Jesus died to redeem a people for himself, and he rose from the dead victorious over sin and death. That's why you can have life, because Jesus died the death that you deserve, and he was risen from the dead. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead can raise you from dead works to, to live and serve the living God. Resurrection life in Jesus Christ. That's the good news of the gospel. None of your works, not a single one. All of his, all of his work, his work, his death, his resurrection. Have it, have it and have life. Apart from it, die. No works, confession of sin, repentance, and faith. And that by the gift of God. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. When thou mayest be found. There is but a season when God may be found for you. And you don't know the marks of that season. You don't know the times. You don't know the seasons. Today could be it. Today could be the last day of your life. Will you turn to the crucified and resurrected Savior of the world, Jesus Christ? Or will you die in your sins? That's what's laid before you today and nothing less. Nothing less than eternal life and eternal death. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble and shall compass me about with songs of deliverance. Hear what is offered to you today. What is the fundamental blessing you need in this world? What do you need? A family, a, a husband who loves you, a wife who loves you, lots of kids, a good job. Steady income. An amazing mustache. What do you consider to be the blessing you need? For fundamentally, the blessing you need is pardon of sins. Understand that if you have pardon for sins, you have everything. If you can have pardon for sin, you have everything. That's what Jesus offers you today. Pardon for sin. And if you have that, you have everything. If you don't have that, you have nothing. Hear what David says in the Psalms. Floods, nothing. Floods are nothing if you have pardon 
for Sims. For God is your hiding place. He will preserve you from trouble. And he will encompass you, encompass you about with songs of deliverance. You deserve curses. You deserve curses upon your head forever. And more horrendous curses than you're willing to even, even dream about. Horrendous curses for your sins against Almighty God. Read his word. Horrendous curses. Terrible judgments. And yet God says if you confess your sins unto him and you believe upon his son, he surrounds you with songs of deliverance. This is utter mercy. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusted in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Reject this gospel and be a fool. Be like a beast. That's what David says. Be like a beast. This is simple, beautiful, good news. So don't be a fool. Don't cast off the gift of God. Don't cast off eternal life for your sins. What folly. Small pleasures fleeting away, leading to death. Small pleasures fleeting away and leading to death. That's what you're choosing over eternal life. If you do not accept Christ today, many sorrows shall be to the wicked. Now and then. Now, many sorrows. You're not choosing life now in exchange for death later. You're choosing death now for more death later. Have life today, now, in Jesus. More joy than any of your sin could ever bring you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Songs of deliverance offered to you freely. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye upright in heart. How can you be among the righteous? How can you be made upright in heart? Only one way. Only through the perfect offering, the perfect sacrifice once and for all of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Don't die in hell and eternity. Die in Jesus and be raised to resurrection life in him. Kiss the son today. Lest he be angry and ye perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him.